In 2010, the largest trial ever done on screening in the country published uh, their findings, the National Lung Screening Trial, which had 53,000 patients randomized to either receive a low-dose chest CAT scan versus a chest X-ray, and, and reported that uh, there was a 20% reduction in lung cancer mortality if you had a screening with a low-dose CT. If you fit into one of these categories, you had to be between the ages of 55 and 74, had to have a 30-pack year history of smoking, that's a pack a day for at least 30 years, and had to have quit within the last 15 years. And those patients' screening was found to be quite beneficial. Well, so our uh, smoking population, the first thing we'd do is we'd advocate for them to quit smoking. In 2012, the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, which makes recommendations for the government on whether someone should be screened or not, gave screening a B recommendation in those groups, which is quite a good recommendation. However, this year, uh, CMS, who is our Medicare coverage, uh, is, is having to decide on whether they should cover the benefit uh, going forward in their Medicare population. Their advisory board uh, voted against coverage. Now, they haven't made a decision yet, and their reasoning was that the National Lung Screening Trial was performed in large academic medical centers with dedicated cancer centers, and they were worried that if screening just uh, blasted out into the communities and were done in the van in the back of a mall, that maybe the benefit wouldn't be seen in those patients, and in fact, worse yet, maybe there would be harm to patients who had an evaluation for an abnormal screen. We were able to bring a team of physicians who are screening experts to CMS and to provide them with this framework, policy framework for how they could roll it out safely and effectively. Who should be screened, how you should couple smoking cessation, how you should have uh, a, a really good team of people to take care of people who have an abnormal scan and, all, and so on and so forth. What are the right parameters for a CT machine to get the appropriate screen? And so that meeting went uh, extremely well, though we're waiting for uh, the government to make a decision on that. We are still declining in our smoking rates in the United States, and whereas at one point we were well over 50% of our adult uh, uh, males and females, now we're below 24% for the first time. And there are a lot of former smokers who are still at risk because they smoke for years and quit. There are actually more former smokers in the United States than current smokers in the United States. How we send that message, I don't know how much plainer we could make it, but we are seeing declines in cigarette smoking in the United States. Um, could we do better? Absolutely. Should we do better? Absolutely. Um, but screening is not a license to continue smoking, and that's why we think a smoking cessation program should be at least available to patients who are interested in screening. However, former smokers need to be screened, and current smokers who need to be screened who are in those eligible categories, we'd certainly encourage them, just like they would get a screening mammography or colonoscopy to be screened in the appropriate setting. It's the age-old question about access. Who has access? One thing we know about all screening tests is if you don't have a medical home, you're unlikely to get any screening test. So, for example, if you're getting your care at a, at a dock in the box or at a hospital emergency room, you don't have someone who knows you and has a relationship with you and says, John, you know, it turns out you're 55 years old and you've been smoking for 30 years. Good for you, you quit, but you're eligible for screening. John's more likely to take that and move forward with it and be identified as an eligible participant for screening if he has a medical home. So your issue is a, a good one. Um, I do think there's going to have to be mass education of our primary care providers in the United States and also direct uh, education to patients who might qualify. Always has to be coupled with the quit, this, you know, the quit smoking policy.